I left it. Please welcome to the stage, Bruce Momjin. Hello, everyone. Wonderful to see you. Uh, my name is Bruce Momjin. I do work for EDB. And uh, I'm here to talk about potential bad news for Postgres, right? Uh, I usually have very optimistic talks and uh, have one about Postgres living forever and another one about democracy and databases. But, you know, as a leader, it isn't always like, you know, rainbows and unicorns. And we have to always look at what challenges are ahead of us. Now, the good news is Postgres doesn't really have any major challenges ahead. I've been with the project for 26 years, and uh, it's been a, a very smooth ride, it regularly yearly releases, and steady growth, as, as Peter Zeitzig mentioned yesterday. But uh, we always, as leaders, have to be looking to see what are the storm clouds on the horizon, what things could happen to us. And as a leader, the more you can understand what possible things could happen, the, more, the sooner you see the danger signs, the quicker you can react, and hopefully uh, you can avert a lot of these problems. So we have a very strong leadership team in the community. Uh, I was talking to somebody last night for two hours after the party about how unusual our community is as a, as a pure open source project with so many companies and individuals around the world involved. Uh, that's obviously one of the keys to our strength. But we do have potentially every project of this size has challenges. And uh, what I'm going to be talking about for the next, uh, I guess, 11 or 12 minutes is the challenges that could happen to Postgres. And, and if you're involved in other open source projects or other software projects, uh, these are not unique to Postgres. Uh, these are potential problems that uh, could exist really uh, in any project. Uh, I think we're just a little better maybe at uh, looking out for them and, and, and uh, fortunately being able to avoid them in a lot of cases. So what, what challenges do we have? First, I'd like to talk briefly about the current status of Postgres, where Postgres is going, and what uh, sort of growth we've seen. And, and this, is, this is pretty obvious to everyone. Uh, but the three challenges I really want to cover uh, are the challenges to the project. We'll talk about how projects can be challenged. There are some, some serious uh, sort of bad news stories from different projects that have happened over my time with Postgres. Uh, probably the most recent one was uh, CentOS, kind of going in the wrong direction, I, th I would say, in, in terms of its community. Um, but there's others. Uh, there's some, some patent issues we should talk about. Then there are competitive challenges. How does Postgres exist in the market? And finally, uh, there's some technical things that we'd love to, we'd love to get done. Uh, there's always a list of technical things that we'd like to do. But interestingly, the technical challenges are at the bottom uh, because those are probably the most manageable uh, the things that we we'll probably have our, our biggest focus on day to day, uh, but it's, it's some of these more esoteric topics that actually can really uh, be your, your serious problem. So let's, uh, let's first talk about where Postgres currently is. Uh, it has, I've been with it for 26 years now. It's had 25 years of consistent development, uh, 35 years if you go back to the Berkeley days, 180 major features. We do have a uh, a beta coming out tomorrow, beta, Postgres beta 15. Uh, it has 186 features, which is about exactly where we are for most, most, uh, most of our major releases have about that number. Uh, so it's kind of uncanny how close that number is over, over years and years of development. You think it would, it would, it would oscillate wildly, but uh, in fact, it's always in that, typically in that 170 to 190 number. Um, and, of course, we put out quarterly money releases. We did that a, a week or two ago uh, to keep our software current. We have a healthy community structure. We are BSD licensed, meaning that the software is available for no restrictions, including uh, the use of Postgres for, um, for commercial projects and closed source development. We have a, a diverse uh, community uh, geographically, culturally. Uh, we're a multi-company uh, project, and, and we continue to get new uh, companies getting involved. Uh, it's sometimes hard to even keep track of all the new ones that get involved, but it, it is a super exciting place to be. Uh, this is a great chart talking about some of the features in Postgres 13. Uh, as you'll notice, you have a lot of companies, and, and I love this chart because each of those slices is one company that's getting involved. My employer there is the orange one, uh, EDB, but <clears throat> 
there's a lot of other really, really major ones, and, and some big names like NTT, Fujitsu, Amazon, a um, bunch out of, uh, out of Japan, VMware. I mean, there's, there's a lot of activity. Uh, and this is a, a continual changing list because we have different companies that are getting involved all the time. Uh, one of the great things about us is we're, we're innovating in multiple directions at one time because we have a, a, gr a diverse group of people. So we, are, we aren't like a one-trick pony. Uh, you see a lot of uh, features coming in. And we are the most loved database, at least we, relational database. We were in 2020. I think somebody beat us last year. But anyway, we, we consistently are up there uh, in, in sort of people who like what we're doing. <coughs> so that's, <coughs> that's where we are. Let's talk about the challenges to the project. Um, first off, a uh, potential pa challenge could be leadership disruption. Uh, I talked about the CentOS case where uh, CentOS, the original maintainers, were having trouble getting resources and funding. Red Hat um, volunteered to help. Uh, Red Hat ev eventually became the major leadership in the project. And then, uh, surprise, surprise, uh, CentOS decided to sort of change its direction in terms of what it was going to offer to the community. Um, that has uh, been a very disruptive process and obviously the rise of Rocky Linux and, and, and alternatives is, is a testament to the, to the change there. Um, and that, that is obviously something you want, you want to try and avoid. GIMP uh, actually uh, had a problem in the early 2000s um, where they had almost abandoned the project and then kind of took it, some people later take it over. So healthy leadership is, of course, a very important part of open source. Uh, reputation, it's very easy for poor reputation to kill a project, particularly a database. I'm not sure how many of you remember um, Firebird, uh, but they had a password, <clears throat> sort of a, a, a fixed password issue way back when they started in the 90s. And um, that hurt the reputation, and obviously for Postgres, um, where reputation is very important, uh, the quality of the work we do, the, the, the security of the, of, the pro, of, the, of the software, the stability, um, the reliability, those are absolutely key. Databases are just have to be way at the top of this, and we fortunately have a very strong team that, that keeps on top of that. Patent attacks, I know Amanda Brock mentioned this yesterday. This is a real issue. Uh, there is some unit, there is some Good news, uh, Open Invention Network, for example, is a sort of open source clearinghouse for patents. Um, I do mention Microsoft here, but that is from the early 2000s, uh, where they uh, were um, trying to, to uh, use patents to prevent Linux from interoperating with the Windows file system. Um, it's just the most clear example I could think of uh, with open source. But <clears throat> it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge, and I don't know anybody really knows the answer. It uh, doesn't keep me up at night, but uh, I have my antenna are always out for this kind of thing. Identity challenges, uh, obviously our name, our trademark, uh, our website are, are you know, part of who we are. Uh, we are actually involved in a trademark issue with somebody right now, so uh, we have a very strong team who works on that, and I'm sure that will be resolved satisfactorily. Uh, cloud starvation, this is a good one. Uh, I get asked a lot about that, and you can see two blog entries there at the bottom. Uh, the, the issue with cloud starvation is the question of whether a cloud vendor could become so big that the, the actual existence of the open source project becomes obscured. Uh, fortunately for Postgres, uh, we have seen nothing but uh, positives out of uh, cloud vendors. Obviously, Amazon is a big sponsor. Google put out a big uh, sort of embedded version of, of Postgres, I believe, two weeks ago uh, that they're going to be talking about. Uh, Microsoft... Uh, does employ one of our core uh, developers. Amazon does as well. Uh, so it's, it's been a good thing for us. That I, it's not, I'm not saying don't worry about it, but it's obviously something that uh, potentially could be a problem. But fortunately for us, um, it has been a net benefit, and, and hopefully that will remain. So that's really it with, um, in terms of project challenges. Let's talk about competitive challenges. This is really related to how we exist in the market, how our solutions resonate with, <clears throat> with what people need to do. So obviously Postgres is part of a set of database solutions. Um, we now know this whole NoSQL pantheon of, of, of options. Uh, and obviously there could be a time when, post, when relational is not important anymore. I know I, I talked 
on Monday uh, when I, I gave uh, a tutorial about sort of the long life of relational. We actually I talked about it on Tuesday uh, during the non-relational talk. And relational is always sort of managed to subsume and, and bring in the newness of different projects and different ideas. But potentially, you know, if everyone wanted embedded, Postgres would have trouble getting there. If everyone wanted, um, well, the other ones we actually are doing pretty well in. <laughs> so I'm not too worried. Uh, but again, something to keep an eye on. What does the market want? Uh, there's a lot of forks of Postgres, a little chart over here on the right. Cloud customization forks, horizontal scaling forks, uh, distributed uh, database forks, if you want to call them that, data warehouse forks. Um, all of our forks have been pretty positive. Uh, even after they fork, these projects continue to be involved with us. They continue to sponsor conferences. They continue to have bug fixes and bring developers to us. Um, and a lot of times I think people fork and think, I'm just going to fork and I'm never going to come back. But in fact, once they kind of see how interesting and energetic the Postgres community is, I think a lot of times they, they sort of, after a year or two, they're like, you know, we're doing our thing over here, but there's this amazing technology that the Postgres community keeps putting out every year. Do we really want to just, uh, do we just want to throw that away? Do we want to just ignore that? Is that a great idea? So one of the great things about what we've done is that the, a lot of these forks, even if they leave, for example, Greenplum eventually comes back. Uh, Greenplum's trying to get up to current Postgres. They've got, they hire, they have a number of employees who are still helping us. Um, so it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Timescale, another uh, extension uh, that, that has helped us. So it's, it's interesting. The forks are obviously looking for a market segment that Postgres is not meeting. And to some extent, they've been successful. And to the extent they're successful, do they continue to integrate and be involved with the community? And a lot of times they do. Um, they don't have to, and sometimes they don't, but uh, we see it as a net positive. Uh, so I, we, I think maybe we're coming at that from a, from a point of strength. Uh, we don't see it as, as, as so much of a challenge to us, but it's an opportunity for Postgres technology to go other places um, and also to, to effectively get them involved with Postgres to the point where they want to bring back and be involved uh, with what we're doing as well. So it, it's, it's been a pretty positive experience. Uh, decline of relational, I said before, if relational was to go down, um, you know, it, uh, that would be a big, a big wallop for us. Uh, if somebody said, we don't need relational anymore, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's, um, fortunately, you know, we're, what, 52 years in and we're still going with relational, so maybe I shouldn't be worried too much. But, uh, you know, it's, as a, as a leader, it's a potential outcome, uh, and we, we just keep an eye on that. So um, to kind of wrap up, let's talk about the technical challenges. Maybe this is the part everyone wanted, right? Because you get to see, oh, this, what things Postgres doesn't have, or what things do I think Postgres needs. Um, frankly, it's the early part that keeps me up. The technical part, I think we've got that down. Uh, it doesn't happen as quickly as I want, and it takes a while, and sometimes I don't get my way. But eventually, a better solution uh, usually comes out. And if you look at our steady development, if you look at the features that we've been putting out in the past decade or two, uh, you know, I, I'm certainly very proud of that. So um, the technical part, as important as it is, 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 is not something that I think we, we manage um, better. And, and frankly, I have so many people who keep an eye on that technical part that, that I don't have to worry about that. That's sort of the other parts is the part that, that people don't think about a lot, and, and that's the part that maybe, uh, maybe I feel called to look at. One of, the, one of the things that we've been struggling with for a long time, pretty much since we started, is something that's been termed right amplification. That's a, a weird term, uh, but effectively, the design of Postgres coming out of Berkeley was very simple. And frankly, that simplicity has served us incredibly well over the years. Uh, we don't have like an undo segment, if you're familiar with that. Uh, the way that we do updates, the way we do transaction is super simple and it allows us to scale in ways that frankly, a lot more complicated systems can't scale. So that is super exciting. On the other hand, that simplicity has a cost, and that simplicity 
um, is we're going to call write amplification. It has to do with the fact that updates can cause index growth. Um, it has to do with the cleanup process that we, processes that we have to do. It has to do with transaction statuses that we keep on each row that we have to keep current. It has to do with the transaction counter that is real, relatively small and can potentially needs to be frozen before it wraps around. And the question I always have in my mind is, are we better off doing a major overhaul of this, or do we continue with incremental improvements? And we've been doing incremental improvements since I've been around. Um, and, and I don't know the answer to this, and we have some projects um, like uh, Z-Store, which, which attempted to address it. We have another gentleman now who, um, out of Belarus, uh, Alexander Krotkov, who is working on a more radical change. But the bottom line is this is something we keep an eye on um, and something that every release incrementally improves. There are some major advantages to our simplicity, uh, but I wouldn't, prevent, pre I wouldn't pretend that it doesn't have a downside. And I think that downside is some, uh, particularly for certain write heavy workloads that we continue to look at. Another one that I am, is near and dear to my heart because I've been working on it for four years is uh, transparent data encryption. Uh, if you're familiar with that term, uh, we call it cluster file encryption, and it basically allows for the encryption of storage in the file system. Uh, we already obviously support Linux uh, storage encryption, but this would allow the visible file system to be encrypted. Uh, again, I had about two years of monthly meetings on this. We got a patch that had like 80, 40% uh, done. Uh, that patch language for a while. I'm hoping in Postgres 16 we're going to make some strides on this. It looks like we're now aligned. But I will tell you that people love to talk about security, and everyone has a different opinion sometimes. So it's often very difficult to get everyone moving in the right direction, and I would say it took about two years to get everyone moving in the right direction. Uh, again, I have a URL there at the bottom. Horizontal scaling. This is another thing that I think is super important for Postgres as data needs get larger, the ability to spread databases across multiple systems transparently. Uh, we've, I've been working on this for about four years, and it effectively is a combination of foreign data wrappers, partitioning, and parallelism. The good news is Postgres 14 pretty much solved that for read-only workloads, and we're waiting to get numbers on how that works. And then we have Postgres 15 coming out, which starts to improve the read-write workloads for this. So again, multi-year project. I think we're making good progress. Um, never fast enough for me, but I think we're, we're doing well. And then finally, the tool chain that we use. We're written in C. Our, stuff's, you know, our scripts are written a lot, we have a lot of Perl. Uh, we're using libraries like XML that maybe aren't being maintained sometimes. So we're continually having to up our tool chain and keep it current. And finally, dramatic technology changes. There's potential that technology could dramatically change. Fortunately, we've adopted that really well. When SSDs came, the only change we had to make was random page cost. When virtual machines, containers, and cloud changed, we didn't have to change anything. Because we're already so simple, we just ran on top of whatever they gave us, and we didn't really have to optimize anything. So that's the good news, I think. I wanted to kind of talk about the project challenges, the technology challenges. Uh, the community challenges, the leadership challenges. I think we're in good shape, but we keep an eye on it just to make sure that we continue for another, what, 26 years or however long we're going to keep doing this. Uh, it's been an exciting ride, and I've been enjoyed it. And thank you for letting me talk to you.